welcome to the second season of the Ecologies of Danger podcast. Ecologies of Danger is a project produced by the students of a course on environmental security at Colgate University. In this season, we look at the different ways in which the environment has become a security issue. In this episode, Shabeli Miles looks at the geopolitics of oil in Azerbaijan. If you've never heard anything about the Caucasus region, you're not alone. Here's your crash course. It's a small, mountainous area between Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. The Black Sea and the Caspian Sea are positioned on either side, separating an area slightly bigger than the state of California. During the Soviet era, it was Russia's backyard. Today, the region may finally be making a name for itself. And Azerbaijan, a small country in the southern part of the region, is leading the way. How? Well, how else? Oil, and lots of it. Azerbaijan's oil wealth means that when it comes to international relations, the country can take a bigger slice of the political pie. Call it oil diplomacy. Azerbaijan's arms are open wide, welcoming trade deals from around the world, even in hard times. People of Azerbaijan are living better and better. During the crisis year of 2009, our economy grew 9.3%, industry 8.6%, inflation 1.5%, hard, uh, hard currency reserves are $20.4 billion. In these circumstances, what opposition can uh, deliver? That was President Ilham Aliyev proclaiming the country's economic progress despite the 2009 global financial crisis. He also boasts that Azerbaijan is the most rapidly developing country in the world. In making these, and other bold statements, President Aliyev naturally dismisses all criticism of government corruption and oppression of free speech. Azerbaijan's political and economic policy is a new type of resource nationalism, which relies on continuous economic expansion within a global market. But this doesn't mean Azerbaijan's all loosey-goosey with its prized asset. The government maintains strict oversight, largely through the National Oil Company. Its official name is the State Oil Company of the Azerbaijani Republic, but the rest of the world just knows it as SOCAR. A critical piece of Azerbaijan's new oil diplomacy is the baku tbilisi Chehan oil pipeline, which transports a majority of the nation's precious oil from the capital of Baku to Turkey's Mediterranean coast via Georgia. Since day one, Baku has represented the epicenter of Azerbaijani's oil and natural gas reserves. Azerbaijan was once known as the Land of Fire. Near the city of Baku, the hillsides would ignite, fueled by natural gas trapped in the soil. Before oil refineries, oil was extracted by hand. The viscous black fluid was said to flow like water through the soil. They have used this good fortune to transform Baku into a modern, industrialized urban center. And while many will always see Azerbaijan as the land of fire, the national identity has shifted, fostering a new dream, the land of the future. But don't take my word for it. Sokar has become the official spokesperson for Baku and the nation at large. The capital is once again a desirable place for life and entertainment, attracting business and foreign investment. Baku reflects a spirit of optimism, the spirit of Azerbaijan, land of the future. This commercial from Sokar's YouTube channel embodies their new vision. The future is both a long-term aspiration and a reality that's occurring as we speak. And this vision is literally, and figuratively, fueled by the nation's oil. The construction of the pipeline was Azerbaijan's largest economic project to date. The pipeline spans over a thousand miles, and it's worth almost four billion dollars. This may seem like an extravagant investment, but Azerbaijan sees the pipeline as its economic lifeline, and more recently, its political foothold in the international diplomacy abroad. Azerbaijan's interest in Europe, as well as its unusual friendship with Israel, prompts many questions and some criticism 
on what exactly Azerbaijan hopes to gain from expanding its oil industry to an international audience. The newest buzz suggests that Azerbaijan hopes to distance itself from the Caucasus and align more closely with the European Union and other Western nations. In doing so, perhaps Azerbaijan can seize the opportunity to assert itself as a new European power. The ambassador of Azerbaijan to Belgium, Fouad Iskandavas, holds this common Azerbaijani view that the nation is, in fact, part of Europe. The Caucasus' pivotal location at the intersection of Eastern Europe, the Middle East, and Asia has left nations like Azerbaijan with what seems to be a bit of an identities crisis. Through the trade of oil and natural gas, Azerbaijan is able to create a new cultural outlook and political ideology. European side and Azerbaijani side were all in favor of stronger relationship. As close Azerbaijan to European market, market it's better for us. As close and also for energy sufficiency and energy security of European Union, as closer we are to Europe, it's better for us from political point of view because we are closer to European space of values. The ambassador sounds like a broken record, reaffirming again and again Azerbaijan's reliance on oil as an economic endeavor as well as its political basis. Throughout the rest of the interview, it's over 20 minutes long, he repeats that phrase we just heard, energy security, several times. In the United States, this concept is often framed as energy independence, which dates back to the Nixon era. President Nixon defined energy independence as the ability to meet the energy needs of the nation without depending on any foreign energy source. Azerbaijan took this idea and ran with it. In the world of oil diplomacy, Azerbaijan has not only generated enough oil to meet its demands, but now other countries are dependent on Azerbaijan to meet some of their country's energy needs. The best example of how oil shapes the country's diplomacy is Israel. Azerbaijan is the only predominantly Muslim nation to be in good standings with Israel. They're actually so close that in 2009, President Aliyev was quoted saying that Azerbaijan's relationship with Israel is like an iceberg. The bulk of it is below the surface. Our relations uh, are very broad, diversified. They cover many areas. Uh, I mentioned some of them. And I'm sure that the visit of Mr. Prime Minister will allow us to discover new areas of cooperation. You can definitely tell how vague President Aliyev is when he describes Azerbaijan's relation with Israel. The inner workings of this international alliance draws from various similarities between the two nations. Most strikingly, both countries have been fighting a bloody ethnically charged war for years. For Israel, it's the Gaza Strip. For Azerbaijan, Nagorno-Karabakh. Azerbaijan provides Israel with oil and natural gas, and in return, Israel supplies Azerbaijan with ammunition. Israel is probably arming Azerbaijan in its ongoing conflict with Armenia over the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. Russia also supplies Azerbaijan with weapons, but the problem is, Russia also supplies the Armenians. To complicate things further, Russia's Prime Minister, Dmitry Medvedev, is supposed to be acting as a mediator between Armenian and Azerbaijani diplomats. Because of this, the hostility for Armenia still smolders in the land of fire. The trade deals with Israel, made possible by the pipeline, is a strategic way for Azerbaijan to become less reliant on Russia, whose intervention in the Caucasus spans decades and still haunts the region today. After the fall of the Soviet Union, many countries in the Caucasus had to regroup and rebuild on a newly opened global stage. Azerbaijan is just one unique example of a larger transition occurring throughout the region. Oil and natural gas are becoming a more legitimate political platform for resource-rich nations in the Caucasus and elsewhere. But with growth comes painful growing pains. Corruption and ethnically charged tensions have also shaped Azerbaijan into what we see today. The land of the future still has a lot of work to do to secure a promising tomorrow. From Colgate University, this is Chevelli Miles.